Hey, Tyson here, and welcome back to another one of our tech segments here on Maximum Lawyer. The legal digital landscape is, it's evolving. It's evolving very quickly. And so with so many different software solutions bringing up, um, and with each one of those, you know, promising to revolution, revolutionize our workflow, I really wanted to do an episode about how to decide if a software genuinely warrants a spot in your tech stack. And, and I think this is a really important episode. That's why I wanted to do it because things are changing rapidly right now. And I don't want people buying a bunch of softwares when they don't really need them. Uh, and so that's what we're going to be diving into today. But before I do, I do want to remind everyone, if you, if you have not heard, Jim and I are giving away for free stage one of maximum lawyer and minimum time. All you have to do is text stage one to three, one, four, five, zero, one, nine, two, six, zero. And we will send that to you right away. You'll have access to that. This is something we normally only give to guild members and guild members get access to all three stages, but we're going to give you for free just for being a wonderful, loyal listener stage one for absolutely free. doesn't cost you anything. So just text stage one to three, one, four, five, zero, one, nine, two, six, zero. It's something we've spent a lot of time on a lot of effort on, and I hope you will get something out of it. I know you will. All right. So here are the things to consider when, and, I, and I'm going to make this episode fairly high, um, high paced, I guess, fast paced, uh, where I want to get to, I want to knock out a bunch of these pointers and then let you make your decisions on your own. But uh, I'm going to go through these fairly quickly. So you may have to pause it, rewind, whatever. But the the first and most obvious one is just think about your business needs and your objectives before you go out and hire or buy, buy a new software. Okay. Um, it, it, software needs to be a solution, not just another layer of complexity. So ask yourself if it addresses the specific challenges your firm is facing. And how does it dovetail with your firm's larger goals? You need to be thinking into the future when it comes to this. Number two is functionality and features. A shiny list of features, it's it's enticing, it's nice, but will it actually will you actually use them? Will you, will your team actually use them? And yeah, they may be a you know a feature that looks cool now and all that, but is it really that good? Like really kind of think about it. Uh, don't don't fall victim to you know that sh that shiny object syndrome. Prioritize what you need today, but don't ignore scalability for tomorrow. It's a big part of it. The other one, and I think this is overlooked quite a bit, is that user experience and then the usability of it, especially if you're employees. Ease of use is absolutely paramount. I know a lot of you have heard me talk recently about a world without email. Read that book before you buy a software. Okay, I'm, I'm not kidding. Read the book before you, before you buy any new software. Uh, ease of use is paramount. The last thing you want is to invest in a system that becomes just the bane of your team's existence because of the complexity of it. Don't do it. Number four is integration capabilities. We live in an interconnected digital world. Um, your software should easily talk to the tools you already use. You need to have robust APIs. They need to be open APIs generally, uh, and you need to have integration capabilities with all of your softwares. All of your softwares need to be talking. There should not be one software that sits off by itself that doesn't communicate with the other ones. Number five on the list is cost. It's an obvious one, but I, it's it's one that I want to make sure I included on here because I'm sure if I didn't, someone would email me say, why didn't you mention cost? Um, and you shouldn't skimp on essential tools, but you do need to be looking at the total cost of ownership. Um, you need to factor in all the different softwares that you have. Um, but don't just don't buy a software just based on based on sticker price. Another thing is, and I will say, I think that this is overlooked quite a bit, and it's because it's, it's, it's more of a boring topic. But number six is security and compliance. It, we we're in the legal world, right? Um, this has got to be a non-negotiable. So you got to make sure your software that you use stands up to industry security benchmarks, right? Um, and that it passes muster with the bar. It's, it's got to be in compliance with that. Otherwise, you can't use it. There's a lot of softwares out there that you cannot use. You should not use. I'm not going to mention any of the names, but they, just, they don't have the security protection that you need. You got to protect your, your client's sensitive data. Another thing is to, to consider number seven, vendor reputation and support. 
especially support emphasis is on support, not on the, not on the vendor reputation necessarily, but they usually get a good reputation because of the support. Uh, with this, you need to trust, but verify, right. As always, but you need to, do, you need to dive into, um, their set, their support, their support features. How do you get a hold of them? What's the response like? Things like that. Number eight, customization and flexibility, All right? You have a unique firm. This is, this is something we have faced with multiple software companies in the past. We have a unique firm. You have a unique firm. Our software needs to be adaptable to, to respect that. All right. It's a big part of it. Number nine, deployment and implementation. Time is of, is of the, es, uh, of the essence, right? How cl- quickly can you get it up to speed and running with the new software? It's a really important one. You need to consider these deployment options and make sure that they fit in with what your firm needs. It's a big problem with a lot of companies these days. Number 10, scalability and performance. This is, you know, to be honest with you, I should probably put this one um, on as number one. Your firm's not static. It's not going to be static. You need to make sure that your software is going to be able to grow with you as a firm, especially if you have plans for a bigger firm. And if you're growing quickly, you got, it's got to be able to grow with you. Number 11 is get some feedback and reviews, getting reviews from other attorneys, find out what they have to say, find out what other firms have to say, talk to the power users and find out if there's any red uh, red flags when it comes to that software. Number 12 is exit strategy. I know it's one of those things we don't want to talk about, but you need to have an escape plan if the software isn't the right fit. So you need to know your exit options. That's why I'm not a fan of these long-term contracts. Don't get yourself locked into a long-term contract. Number 13, this is a big one for me. There needs to be a trial or a demo. You always need to be able to test drive before you buy and the reputable vendors are going to give you an, an ability and, and uh, they're going to offer the option of a demo or a trial period. The ones that don't, you need to run away from them. Okay. Run away as fast as, as possible. Number 14, training and documentation. Uh, and this is important for us because uh, one, you want to, you want to make sure there's training resources that can help you and your team onboard. But when it comes to documentation, we think it's really important because, uh, you know, our, our, our CTO is Kashif and Kashif has to be able to look through the documentation and make sure that we can use it. And that's why having published APIs are really, really important. Number 15 updates and upgrades. The tech world is constantly evolving and rapid it's, and it's doing so rapidly. So you got to make sure that the software doesn't get stagnant and, and you got to make sure that it is constantly being updated with and with any of the latest features and security patches, that's really really important. Um, you you've got to dump, that's a that's an interest that's a really really important part of this. And I want to iterate reiterate a vital point. You're going to want to make sure that you involve the stakeholders, the people that are going to be using the software in your decision. They're going to be the ones that are going to be interacting with it on a daily basis. So make sure you're getting their feedback as much as possible because it's absolutely invaluable all right so i'm going to wrap things up hopefully you got something out of this make sure you stay tuned for our next episode and until then remember imperfect action will always beat perfect inaction